Apple MDK'd, murder death killed the iMac Pro. Not the 27 inch silver Intel non-pro, but the space black, massively multi-core Xeon machine. And while we've since gotten an all new, all colorful M1 iMac, I want Apple to bring the iMac Pro back as well in an all new, all better, all blacker, all M1X final form. And here's why. Sponsored by CuriosityStream with Nebula. We are so close, so close to a quarter million. So hit that subscribe button and bell and let's build the best community in tech together. Now, normally I not today Satan just any flashbacks or history lessons or digressions at all. But in this case, I need to go over what we had to fully frame what we've lost and why I want it back. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> So in 2013, Apple cut the cheese grater and introduced the trash can shaped Darth Vader helmet of a Mac Pro, a triangle of Xeon CPU and dual AMD GPU that was either meant to be a harbinger of the general compute future or just the further appliantification of Apple's Mac lineup, starting at $3,000. It was maybe the ultimate repercussion of Steve Jobs famously, infamously, slapping that iPad down in front of the Mac team and saying, why can't you just do this? But then the updates stopped. The trash can stagnated. Apple claimed they'd painted themselves into a thermal corner, bet too heavily on the dual GPU design, and the industry just ended up going the other way. But it's also really, really hard not to think Apple bet way too heavily on that appliance design that they saw the success of the iPad in the mainstream market, the rise of a new generation of more casual users that self-identified as pros, but didn't have the same big iron needs of traditional pros and figured driving the Mac in that direction would bring them far greater, far more iPad-like consumer success. I think that's why we got the 2016 MacBook Pro, which sold incredibly well to that broad swath of new and aspiring pros but also just plain pissed off so many of the OG pros who just wanted their damn ports and their scissor switches back. Same with the 2013 Mac Pro, but worse, because Apple took away the ability to expand and update the box, but then also failed to provide those expansions and updated boxes themselves. So yeah, a thermal corner, but also a strategic brick wall. And that made the 2013 Mac Pro just a dead box computing. Seriously badass space gray finish. But the new modular Mac Pro was still a couple of years away. So Apple had to come up with something else, an iMac Pro, I maybe for interim. See, Apple couldn't fit newer, hotter, more power hungry Intel and AMD architectures into that old trash can. But thanks to the beefed up active cooling system, they sure could to the old all-in-one or rather the new 2017 iMac Pro. We're talking from eight to 18 Xeon cores, ECC RAM, up to four terabytes of SSD and AMD Vega Pro graphics starting at $5,000. And it's incredible. Now, flash forward to 2019, and we finally have that all new, all modular, Revenge of the Cheese Grater 2.0 Big Mac Pro back starting at $6,000. And then the M. Night Shyamalan plot twist that just everybody saw coming, Apple announcing that they were transitioning from Intel to Apple Silicon to the M1. And more specific to the needs of this video, just a couple months ago when they end of line the Intel iMac Pro, and then just last month when they announced the all new, all rainbow colored M1 iMac. It's more personal, more powerful, and more capable than ever. Starting at $1,300. But here's the thing. The M1 iMac isn't an iMac Pro. It isn't even a high-end iMac. Apple still got the 27 inch Intel iMac with up to 10 Comet Lake cores and AMD Radeon Pro because no big navi in Apple land, maybe never big navi in Apple land, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, eight terabytes of SSD, nano texture option for the display starting at $1,800. And sure, 10 core cores aren't 18 Xeon cores, that 128 gigabytes of RAM aren't ECC or error correcting RAM. And all the other parts are more prosumer than enterprise server grade, but it's still just well, well beyond the just announced M1 iMac in everything but performance efficiency. And while performance efficiency is huge and M1 is, will be industry changing, it ain't everything. 
So what I'm hoping for, what I would personally do if I had the Infinity Stones, if I had that gauntlet, the ability to cast Power Word Thrill, isn't just an M1X iMac, but a full-on M1X iMac Pro. M1 performance efficiency is so, so good, Apple can blow past the Intel Core, core count, even the Intel Xeon Core count, without breaking a sweat. Literally the heat and power draw would be so low, the bead blasted aluminum enclosure wouldn't even sweat, let alone require those awkward bulges of the past. And for an iMac, where you can't upgrade the GPU anyway, I don't even care about discrete graphics. That's just an implementation detail. Throw cores at that problem, all the cores. And if Apple can fuse in the server grade architecture of the iMac Pro, and the screen tech of the Pro Display XDR with the advances of that final generation of Intel iMac, and I mean down to the 32 inch nano textured mini LED panel starting at around 1800, sure, hopefully, but also going up just as high as Apple needs so they can include options for all the cores, all the memory, all the storage, everything pros need, that would be just one hell of an all-in-one hey a nerd can dream machine for the Pro mainstream. Even when we get the inevitable Apple Silicon modular Mac Pro for the very highest end of Pros, which is something I'm assembling the Tech YouTube Avengers to talk about in my next original on Nebula. That's where I post all my videos, ad-free, sponsor-free, and many times with extended bonus content, but also projects that just wouldn't do so well on YouTube, like my first original, Impact iPhone. There was no question that was a game changer phone. That was ahead of its time. We're gonna make some history together today. The iPhone really, I mean, it has changed, I mean, my life in so many ways. It was the keynote every Apple fan had always wanted Apple to deliver. And you can get a Nebula subscription for absolutely free when you sign up to curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie, or just click that link in the description. And right now, that bundle is 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of decent fast food meal these days for access to their thousands of amazing documentaries and series, like David Rubenstein's show, where he interviews Tim Cook about what it was like to work for Steve Jobs and whether he will eventually one day run for president, as well as all the ad-free and often extended videos on Nebula from Jordan Harrod, Ali Abdal, TechAlter, Epos Fox, MKBHD, and so many more. For over 26% off, less than $15 a year, just click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Ritchie it really helps out this channel. Hit the playlist above for more on M1X, M2, and all the Apple Silicon Macs I think are coming our way next. Just hit the playlist above and I'll see you in the next video.